We don't practice because someone makes us practice. We don't practice for fame or glory. We don't practice to impress anyone and make us feel better about ourselves. We certainly don't practice for money. We practice because we yearn to connect. Connect to the ancestors that built this. Connect to the modern geniuses that inspire us. Connect to our city and our scene and the listeners in the back of the room. But mostly we want to connect to that spark that lives deep within all of us. That spark that wants to be fire. We practice every day to clear a path for that spark. Let's practice together. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the Daily, Daily Guided practice, practice Session. Let's start with our chromatic scale, 88 beats per minute. Let's get to work. Buddy, hello, hello. Hello. Welcome, folks. Like our little, uh, our little intro promo there. We are, uh, we're talking about practice today. We're talking about some killer practice techniques, some ways to get the music that's in us, out of us, to our instruments in the most effective way, and then ultimately to other people so that we can connect. And uh, we're promoing today our, our guided practice, uh, piano guided practice pass. Uh, this is such a cool thing. So we do a daily guided practice session at Open Studio every day. I'm live on Zoom 1 p.m. Eastern. We have a great group in Zoom every day, a nice big group uh, from beginners all the way up to professionals. And you can be a part of this. You also get access to our, our guided practice session app. And today, uh, get in on it now because it's all about to change in a little bit and it's not gonna be this affordable for very long. It's $10 a month. You can get in on the ground level. We'll have a link here. Uh, we have a lot of daily guided practice session people on here. A lot of double dippers, as we call them. Uh, because, you know, people like to work on this stuff. So come work on it with us. We do a Q&A. Uh, like I said, you get access to the app. You get access to the course on openstudiojazz.com. And we're doing it every day. And we're building on things like bebop and playing out and voicings and things like that. And we're building on what we're working on today, which is getting the music that's, uh, that we hear to our instrument, right? From our heads to our hands and then ultimately to our audience. I think this is something that isn't talked about enough on uh, cheesy YouTube instructional videos uh, a la what we're doing right here because it's hard to teach and it's hard to it's hard to work on. It's not as as plain uh, to to work on as, say, like play this scale over this chord. That's very easy to translate. But for this, everybody is different and everybody's coming at it with very different uh, personalities and psychological resources and confidence and things like that. And that all plays a big factor into this. But at the daily guided practice session where we, I think we just put a link here. If you want to get in on that now, it's 10 bucks a month at that, that spot where we do this every day, we've been working on some ways that we could actually practically practice getting the music in our head out through our hands and to, uh, our audience. It's something that is so important and not talked about enough. It's as, as, as important as what notes we play or what rhythms we play is how we play and how we connect. And it's pretty much, I don't know too many like professional world-class musicians that don't deal with this in some way on a regular basis. In fact, a lot of a lot of the pros I know, a lot of the great musicians I know do some form of meditation or yoga or something that connects them to the moment. You know, professional sports teams, heck, even college teams here in America, uh, sports and athletic programs have professional performance psychologists on staff to help with exactly this kind of thing. And I think it's high time that we took some time to address it here just in our nuts and, and, and bolts practice sessions, right? There are ways that we can connect. There are ways that we can, what I like to call clear the path, right? So we have this path from music that's in us out. And oftentimes we get in our own way. We stifle ourselves. We just block that path from, from happening, usually out of ego, usually because we want to impress. At least for me, that's been my biggest obstacle is, you know, it's human nature. I want I want to impress the people that I'm playing for. I want them to think that 
they're having a good time. I want them to think that I'm good at playing the piano, right? I'm not too proud to to talk about that kind of stuff. Like that, I think, is common with almost everybody. That is a, a big hurdle to get over, especially at first. But we can work on that. We can work on not wanting to impress or not having to impress, but rather just letting the moment happen, letting the music that we have, that we actually care about, come out in our playing. And it's above nuts and bolts. It's above scales. It's above rhythm. It's above language. It's above voicings, all that stuff really pales into comparison with this kind of work. So, okay, I I hope I've sold you on the importance of this kind of work, but it is really important. There's no great musician I know that doesn't address this on the regular basis. How do we, how do we work on it? How do we, how do we get the music that we know we, we have in us? We can hear it, right? How do we get it out there? Well, okay, step one, maybe you're not hearing it. Maybe you don't have a ton of music going on in your head. So the first thing we need to address is how much music are we ingesting? There was a great study uh, done, uh, kind of like uh, taking all of these important historical art figures, everybody from Da Vinci to Beethoven to Miles Davis, just a whole bunch of, you know, Hemingway, just all the canon of folks in in a cross-disciplinary way, checking their journals, right? Their, their calendars, their schedules, what they wrote about their processes, and dividing up how they would spend a day, on average, how all of these greats would spend their days. And on average, all of the greats would spend roughly three hours a day ingesting whatever medium that they were a part of. So if they were a painter, they would spend their days looking at paintings three hours on average. If they're a musician, they would spend their day listening to music three hours on average. How much how much music are we listening to? You know, how much Netflix are we watching? How much Facebook are we scrolling versus how much actual music that we love and purport to be part of our lives? How much are we listening to? That's kind of, that's the entry point to this. A real intentional step towards ingesting the things we care about with the intention of this is going to come out in my art later. That has to be a part of it. And if it's not, that's an easy thing to do. You should love the music you're playing. So it should be easy to say, oh, I can spend another hour listening to the music I love rather than scrolling through Twitter, uh, which is just not good for anybody really I think but like that kind of thinking is the first step of really getting more music in our heads that needs to come out so I encourage you to just keep track of how much time you spend ingesting music that you love and be intentional with it make it part of your practice I'm going to practice for an hour right now by listening to this album and I'm going to stay present with it and I'm going to absorb it and I'm going to ingest it and it may or may not come out. We can't, we can't judge that, but that needs to be part of our setup. Okay, so that's, that's the first part, is listening and how crucial that is. We preach that around here all the time at Open Studio. Listening is such a huge part of it. So we have all this music, if we are listening a lot, and, and it builds up over the years, right? So all this music, how do we decide what it is we want to play? Well, there's a couple of criteria that we can think about with music that's in our minds, right? First of all, we can daydream a little bit about what is the sound that I hear my, as myself? What are the things that I connect to? Can I, are there, are there pieces of melody? Are there chord changes? Are there rhythms that make me giggle, that make me uh, get goosebumps, that make me cry? We can, we can notice that and just take stock of what it is that really moves us either to joy uh, or to sadness, or any of these emotions that it is our job to connect with. It is your job as a musician to be able to translate this stuff to these buttons over here. So what are those pieces of the language that do that? There's got to be a song, or a chord change, or something that that connects that. So that's another step of just simply acknowledging what it is that connects us to music. Okay, so now we have some discernment, right? We we can hear things. We know that this is part of our sound. Um, we don't have to force any of this, by the way. This this needs to come out naturally, and it will. You just have to kind of do some of these thought experiments where you think about what is my sound? What does that sound like? Who are my influences? Who are my who are my people that I am most connected to 
musically, you know, my idols. Once we have that, we need to then figure out a way to get that uh, from our head and our heart to our audience. There's one major, well, there's a couple, but the first major obstacle to get the music in our hearts to our audience is is right in front of us. It is our bodies, right? This is the first obstacle that goes between. We cannot telepathically transmit our music to our audience. Not yet, anyway. That's probably coming, I'm sure. But as of now, we have to use our physical body to manipulate some buttons here uh, on our instruments and actually try to make people feel emotions with these buttons. So that's why I want to take this just this first part of this guided practice session and just connect with our bodies. This is something I do at every practice session now, and it's it's only through trial and error and, and honestly decades of, of practice and, and finally gaining some wisdom that this is important. There was a time where I just thought I can just deal with my head going straight to whatever music I can make here, but the, uh, the connection between where I am right now in the moment that I'm, I'm streaming this and my body here in my house is so important to the music that, that's inside me coming out that I spend a good chunk of the first, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes of my practice routine just settling in to the instrument, just getting connected to the floor, to the seat, right? Just kind of feeling my way physically into it. It's as important as anything else I'll do in that session. Again, to make another sports analogy, you'd never go to see a professional sporting event and not see the players spending lots of time warming up, connecting their bodies to the instruments, whether it's a ball or a bat or each other that they have to manipulate in order to play the sport they're about to play. And it's the exact same thing with us here. We have to set up as part of our routine, a connection between our body and the instrument. So important. It's not just a mind and an instrument. There is this wall between us that is our hands, our arms, our torso, all the way down from our legs to our feet to the floor. That is all connected. It doesn't happen without any of that. So let's just take a moment here before we start playing anything. I want you to just start by just taking a big, deep breath. And let's start from the crown of the head and just check in everywhere, starting from the top and we'll go all the way down. But just check in and relax the forehead relax your face. We keep so much tension in our face usually. So just make sure that that's nice and relaxed. Relax your your neck. Sometimes even pianists who don't have to breathe to play a note will keep tension and breath in here as they're playing and and actually aren't breathing, which is odd because you need to breathe to breathe to live. So make sure this is loose and we'll check in with this as we as we go throughout here. But again, I can't emphasize how crucial this is to actually being able to play good music. This is crucial. Let's relax our shoulders. Usually a lot of big muscle tension kept in our shoulders when we play, uh, which is not good because we have small muscles that we have to manipulate. So we have to be loose throughout the shoulders. We've all been there, right? When you perform and you tighten up and you you think you're Keith Jarrett, but you sound not like Keith Jarrett. So just relax everything through there, all through the shoulders, all through the back, the upper back, the lower back, connect to the seat. Try to feel that awareness of where you're sitting on your piano bench or your chair right now, right? Make sure your feet are flat on the floor and let's just follow from our hips down to our legs. Another big deep breath here as we get towards the end of our, of our physical body here. Feel your feet on the floor. This to me is one of the most important connections that I make. It's my hands to the instrument and then the feet on the floor. So you might just just feel the awareness of the bottoms of your soles connected to whatever floor you're on, even if there's a, a shoe underneath your soles and then the floor. Feel it on your shoe. You might lift your big toe up. And so the 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 flats of your feet are the only thing touching and just connect to those corners of your feet right now. Another big deep breath and let's roll our shoulders, maybe draw some circles with our nose one way and then the other. Just again, making sure all of this 
is loose and not constricted and we can breathe. It's so crucial if we actually want to speak whatever's in us out that we're not constricting anything here. I know it sounds weird because we're all down here on our fingers, but this is a very real thing that happens. And some of you are like, yeah, yeah, I know. It happens to me all the time. It happens to me sometimes too, where I get so into it and I try to force something and then nothing comes out there. Okay. So, okay, this seems maybe very ethereal compared to what we usually do, right? Maybe this is a little bit above the clouds for some of you, but that's okay. This is an important part of most great musicians' process of connecting here to the, to the, to the music. Okay, so we're connected to our body. We're in the moment. We're just kind of paying attention to the breath, paying attention to how we feel on the seat. Let's start by playing something very, very simply. And this will be the first attempt at playing what we hear. And we're going to do something by rote. We're not going to improvise. We're just going to play something very simply. And that is a chromatic scale. Members of my, my daily guided practice session know exactly what's about to go down here. Let's do two octaves. We'll start with our right hand on middle C and our left hand on the C just below it. Let me see if I got a... Do I have an overhead here? Oh, look at this. Bam. All right. So right here, middle C and the C just below. Paper up here. We're going to go chromatically up two octaves. In eighth notes, just doing a very basic one, three, one, three, one, two, three fingering. Just two octaves up and down. Let's just play nice and easy, mezzo forte, kind of connected, not staccato certainly, but not super mushy either. Just really basic. Whatever instrument you play, just a chromatic scale starting on C, up and down two octaves. One, two, three, and four, and. Okay, easy enough, right? Yeah, it seems easy. The first step that we're gonna train ourselves to do is a step in accepting what happens when we play. Usually the hurdle that most beginner and intermediate players can't get past when they start playing like actual improvised music with other people is that they don't sound very good. They play things that aren't what they want and they get hung up on it they get in their heads for the rest of the solo or sometimes even the rest of the night. So what we need to do is practice accepting what we play. People like Kenny Warner, the great jazz pianist who has a book, Effortless Master, you talk about this and have exercises that deal with this too. But one of my favorite ways to do this is with a chromatic scale. So we've just played it once together. Now that we have that sound in our head, right? Let's try to hear that. And let's try to hear that on our instrument as perfectly as possible, lined up with the click, uh, the same volume, every note, the same duration between notes. Let's see if we can hear that sound in our head. And here's the, the, the most important part. We don't try to do it, right? We don't try to make it happen. We just hear it and then we play it up and down two octaves. Let's do it. One, two, three, and four. And. What does it sound like to play this chromatic scale? Two octaves. What does it sound like when every note is the same volume? What does it sound like when every note is the same duration? What does it sound like when every note is lined up perfectly with the click track, right? We just are perfectly in time with it. Hear that sound, hear this done, and then let go of any results. Just hear it and let that be enough. Whatever happens, happens, but hear the sound in your head just before you play it. Try it. One, two, three, and four, and. Okay, we've heard it now a couple times. What does your instrument sound like right now? 
playing these two octaves of chromatic notes perfectly. What is the perfect sound in your mind's ear? Lined up perfectly in time with the click, with the best possible sound you can get, where every note is even in volume and duration. Hear the sound. It's probably something you don't do very often. What does it sound like? If this were Keith Jarrett playing this again, what does that sound like? Let's try it. One, two, three, and four, and... And whatever happens, happens. We let it go. We just are hearing the sound we want. And we're letting go of any results. Some of you are probably like, yeah, whatever. Some of you might be like, holy smokes, what is that? That is you doing something completely at ease with no judgment on the results. And it just happens naturally. When I do this exercise for me, when I hear the sound, the ideal sound, I get so much closer to that sound and it takes zero effort because you're just hearing and whatever happens, happens. We don't try, right? When we, oftentimes when we think like, okay, I have to play this perfectly, we grit our teeth, we clench our jaw and we're like, this is going to be perfect. And we try to perfect that stuff out and it sounds terrible. This is an antidote to that. And this can be a, a really a life-changing thing to start to work on. And it happens so easily on this just very easy chromatic scale. Try it again. Hear this today on the instrument you're on, whatever that is, on your voice, on your piano, on your trumpet or saxophone, and hear that perfect sound. You are not going to get there. Definitely not. But let go of any results. Just hear it first and let it happen. It's, it's liberating. Try it. One, two, three, and four, and... Again, to hear the sound, and... Take a big deep breath here if you're playing piano or bass. If you're playing a horn, don't take a deep breath. <laughs> Breathe on through it. Right? Let's try switching it up. Let's try a different sound. Let's go up and down two octaves. Let's do it staccato. A nice even break between. See if right off the bat you can hear what your ideal staccato sound would be and then let go of the results. Don't put any judgment on it. Don't try to change anything. Just hear the sound and see what happens. Two, three, and four, and... Okay, we've done one on our instrument staccato. Let's keep going on that. Let's try to hear it now, now that we know what it's gonna sound like, kind of. Let's hear it again. What does it sound like? What does this scale sound like? Played perfectly staccato with a perfect even break between each note, and each note is the same volume, no matter what the finger or where we are in the range. And then what does it sound like when all of those notes are lined up eighth notes perfectly with this 88 beats per minute click? Let's hear that sound, and then again, just let go of whatever happens. It's not as easy as it sounds. Try it. One, two, three, and four, and. Okay, let's switch it up. Let's do another scale. Let's do an E major scale. Two octaves, whatever your instrument. It's a nice ergonomical scale on the piano. I'm doing two hands at once. Let's start here. Mezzo forte, quasi legato, nothing special, like bare bones, meat and potatoes kind of feel. And again, let's just pay attention to how it sounds. You can try to hear it, but let's just hear how it sounds first. Two, three, and four, and... Right, just two octaves, very simple major scale. Okay, now we've heard it on our instrument. We've heard it on the range we're going to play in. 
let's do it where we try to hear the perfect mezzo forte, somewhat legato scale, E major. Let's hear it perfectly in time with the click and every note perfectly even. Before we do that, just check back in with your posture, right? Lift your heart up to your chest, deep breath, relax. You probably are already carrying tension on your shoulders and face from the work we've been doing. Just notice that and let that tension go. Check in with your feet, make sure they're flat on the floor no matter what instrument you're playing, except for maybe drums. And yeah, just make sure you're in a good, solid, relaxed position. Let's try it again. Now hear this sound before you play it and then let go of whatever happens. It does not matter. All that matters is that you hear it and then don't judge it. Here we go. Two, three, and four, and. Is it possible to not judge it? Try it again. Two, three, and four, and. Hear the perfect sound. The music that's in you right now for this E major scale. Again, three and four and. Again, some of you might be like, what is this esoteric bulletin? And some of you are are probably a little bit floored right now. I know I was when I first started doing this kind of work because of I could see very clearly where this was going for me. I could see the potholes that this was filling in my playing. Okay, so this practice of starting out here, just, just doing exactly what we did, right? Where we do something by rote, something like a scale, or it could be anything. It could literally be an arpeggio. It could be the melody to a tune, whatever it is, anything that is something that you have no control over. We're not improvising here. Something that is by rote, that is pre-planned. This is like the first step. This is if you ever have tried meditation, this is just following your breath for five minutes and realizing, oh snap, I can't play anything without judging uh, after the fact. That judgment uh, takes you out of the moment. And when we're improvising, the more we can be present, the better we're gonna be able to get the music that's in us. That music that we spend hours a day listening to and absorbing and wanting to express ourselves and be these great musicians, we are just, we're just blocking that path. If we're thinking about like, well, that sucked, or I really messed that up, I'm the worst. I'm never gonna be whomever is my hero. Like that kind of judgment on what you just played is a killer. It is a killer and it doesn't matter because you can't change it. So this training of just basic scales and hearing a beautiful sound, hearing your perfect sound, hearing maybe even your idol's sound, hearing how Herbie Hancock would play the scale. How would that sound? And ignoring the results is, is going to be a big part of becoming a better improviser. So, okay. So we're, we're clearing the path, right? We have that path from our hearts to our hands now. We're checking in with our body. We're connected to our body. We're in the moment. We understand that that wall that is our physical body is, is kind of melting down here as we get connected. What do we do when we have to improvise? How does this work? Well, there's a few things that we need to consider. And uh, we'll just start very simply, like we started with the scale. So let's do a blues. We're gonna do an F blues, and we're gonna start by using language that is is already in us. So I want you to start with a vocal solo. And again, some of you are freaking out, like, "What are you talking about, vocal solo? I'm not a I'm not a vocalist." Yeah, it doesn't really matter. Because all we're doing right now is tapping into some rhythmic language that we already have. This is the easiest way to get going with connecting what's in us to what's outside of us, which is our instrument. So I will accompany you on a couple of choruses of F blues. I, I want you to put your instrument down or if you're at your piano, sit on your hands. And I want you to not think about pitch at all. I want you to think like you're a snare drummer and that you're going to take a snare drum solo here over an F blues. And what does that sound like? Again, if you're listening to a, a lot of music, you're probably collecting 
some rhythms, even some basic rhythms that you can use here in your snare drum solo. So I encourage you to think about those rhythms again that mean something to you. Again, we just want to hear what's inside of us and then let it go. So don't judge what you do. See if you can do this snare drum solo simply and not judge. Your first reaction is going to be like, oh, this is lame. I bet, I bet Adam could do something cooler than this, or I bet if I were Brad Meldow, this would be a lot rhythmically more interesting. Just let go of that. Come, try to let go of that. It's going to be really hard to do, but this is crucial. Again, you can't live in what you've just done. You have to be in the moment. And I know it sounds a little esoteric, but again, this is so important for being a good improviser. It just is. All right. So I'll comp for you. We'll do two choruses. Again, no touching of the instrument. Put it down. Just like a snare drum player. Something, I'll give you a little example. You could do something like two, one, two, three, four, uh, uh. Go do, go do, uh, uh, mm, dum, uh, 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 one, two, three, and. Just rhythm, no pitch at all. Okay, stick with me here. We're going to keep on that same idea, but I'm going to give you three notes, just three notes. We're doing an F blues here, so keep your if you're a pianist, keep your left hand tucked uh, under your seat and just use your right hand. Any other instrument, just uh, play these three notes. F, A flat, and B flat. Now, those are your only options, and I don't want you to really think about the notes at all. I want you to take another snare drum solo, but using only these three notes. Okay, so again, as an example, it sounds something like this. Two, three, four. A two, two. Still vocalize. Something like that, right? So let's try it. Two choruses. Two, a one, two, three, and. Again, still vocalize and use those three notes, F, A flat, and B flat. Let's do another chorus. Some of you, that might be the best solo you've ever taken because you're so much more focused on the rhythmic development of what you're doing. You don't have any options. You can't really mess up the harmony if you're just playing a partial blues scale over a blues. In fact, that could have been the tastiest thing you've played all week or all month. I know for me, it felt like something I'd, I'd like to do more often. So let's expand it one more level. Same kind of thing vocalize your snare drum solo. We'll take two full choruses again, and let's do a full blue scale. So F, A flat, B flat, B, C, E flat, and then back to F. We can make it the secret blue scale if you want to add that A natural into, a la Peter Martin. 
So again, though, I want you to pull back from the temptation of thinking about melody, of thinking about pitch. Think about improvising the rhythm that's in you first, right? Hear the rhythm and then allow the pitches to kind of just happen, see where it goes. And then the key to this is do not judge what happens. Whatever happens, happens, let it go. So hear the sound of a perfect, not, there's no such thing as a perfect snare drum solo. Hear the sound of a snare drum solo, whatever that means to you, whatever's happening in you right now, hear that rhythmic solo, add those pitches of an F blue scale or a secret blue scale. And let's see what happens. Let it go though. One, two, one, two, three, and. Again, still vocalizing everything, or the rhythm at least. here. Here we go. You see what's going on here? We're working at getting some music that's inside of us out in the clearest possible path as, as we can. And so taking away our options of thinking about pretty mundane things like what notes sound good over what chords, it really puts an emphasis on what's important, which is being true to what we're hearing and rhythm. And these two things are often overlooked by some pretty, uh, I would say, superficial theoretical things that we can do here and nerd out on. It's easier to nerd out on harmony and scale choices and playing out and all that stuff than it is to nerd out on being yourself and playing rhythms that sound good. I'm just saying. Okay. So we have, we have our blues scale option. Let's completely take off the handcuffs for what to play. So you can play whatever you want on this F blues. There'll do two more choruses, but I want you to maintain this relationship with rhythm and what you're hearing. Only play the rhythms that you're hearing. See if you can take your snare drum solo, but use any notes you like. One, two, three, uh. Uh, 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 uh. Vocalize your snare drum solo. That kind of work is going to get you closer to the promised land than almost anything else. So just hearing what you're playing rhythmically and then letting it happen. So don't judge what happens. It could suck a lot and you can't change that. So see if you can do this all without passing any judgment of what you play. Kenny Warner will often talk about like placing your hand down randomly and saying that's the most beautiful sound I've ever heard. Sort of Pavlovian training of letting go of what has happened. You cannot change the fact that you played something terrible. <laughs> it's just not gonna happen. But you can ruin the rest of your solo by being hung up on it. So let's practice not getting hung, hung up on it. Um, before we do this though, just a reminder, Ian is putting here in the chat, uh, we are about to change what we do with the Piano Guided Practice Pass. This is our daily guided practice session. I do these every day at 1 p.m. Eastern on Zoom. There's an app, it's a beautiful app that you can check out. Uh, and so you can get in on that for just 10 bucks. It's pretty amazing. Follow the link here in the chat. It's in the description and come practice with us like every day. Okay, this is gonna be a freestyle. You can play whatever notes you wanna play. F blues, again, there's no limit to what, what you can do. The only rules are you have to think like a snare drum solo first, right? Like you're a drummer and you're just playing a snare drum solo and then you have to let go of whatever happens. Hear the sound and then put no judgment on what happens. It sounds almost silly until you realize how important this can be. Let's try it. One, two, one, two, three, and.
it going. Do one more chorus. Vocalize your rhythm. Be the drummer. That's what I'm talking about. That is you. What you're hearing here is you coming through. It is the actual you coming through, not you running some lame lick uh, that you <laughs> you might have got from someone else. Not you running your fingers in an aimless way over some scale that someone told you was hip. If you are focusing on the rhythm that you're hearing, you're hearing you coming through and it can be a big difference in how you actually connect to actual human beings. It's great. It's great. And it's the start of something big. So congrats to you for going with me today. I know for a lot of you, this is like pretty pie in the sky from what you might be used to on these guided practice sessions. But this is something that is important to me. It's important to, uh, to I think, any musician who wants to be true to the music that's in them. So again, lots of listening. Uh, practice scales and things that are, are by rote or pre-written, predetermined by hearing the sound and then letting go of what happens. Don't judge what happens. And then practice vocalizing what you're going to play rhythmically from you first and then letting go of whatever notes that you have. Um, we do this every day here at Open Studio. Check out the link here where you can sign up for the Piano Guided Practice Pass. That includes the Guided Practice app, that's the daily guided practice session. Five days a week, I'm practicing. We've got a great group. We do it on Zoom. We do it on the app. There's many ways you can uh, ingest that. So check that out. It's only 10 bucks a month. It's pretty a pretty good deal. And that's going to change very soon because it's just been flying, flying off the shelves popular. And so we're probably going to up the game on the whole thing. Don't worry for my folks in here. We're going to grandfather the people who are already in. So get in on it now before uh, it becomes a lot more expensive. Okay. Thanks, everybody really love this one. This was so much fun. Uh, this is something that I haven't touched on a lot, but it's actually a much bigger part of my own personal practice than I've done here on this YouTube channel. And so let me know what you think. Comment here and let me know if you like this kind of practice because I can certainly do variations in different ways we can work on getting, getting the path cleared from what's in us to what's, uh, what's getting out of us. It seems like sometimes it's a it's a life, lifelong uh, pursuit, and it is, but there are practical things we can do every day in our practice sessions to help get that thing going. So let's move on it, you know? Cool, everybody. Thanks again. Check out the Piano Guide to Practice Pass. Uh, get on it while you can, and I'll see y'all. Happy practicing. <laughs>